Now, you have due this Sunday your communication analysis. And so what I wanted to do was to go over a sample paper with you. Here's the deal, Lucille. In professional writing, as you already know, you have to be able to take a template, whether it's a certain kind of memo, a request for proposal, whether it's an employee review, whether it's a document set on electronic warfare, whether, whether it's an annual report, a quarterly report if you're an accountant, you have to take a template. And usually someone will hand it to you as something somebody's done in the past. And you have to follow that template to the letter. It's a skeleton. The same in this class. In these projects, I'm giving you a template. And I'm challenging you, A, to follow that template, and B, to start adding in some of the chunking devices that you've already talked about in week one. So let's take a look at this communication analysis here. Let's look first look all the way up here in the top left. And I, so I don't want any title pages or anything. Uh, if you want to put your name on your, uh, on your final delivery, that's fine. Just put your name up there, the name of the course, and uh, project one. That's, that's fine. I don't want a title page or anything. Now comes, now comes your main title. And one of the rules is that main title has to be, A, the largest thing on the page, and B, it has to be at least two point sizes larger than any subtitle. So look at this communication analysis, and then look at that uh, subtitle on background. Is one two point si at least two point sizes larger than the other? Yes, it is. It's four point sizes larger than the other. Okay, so then we have um, the subtitle, part one background. The purpose of this section is to inform the reader where you are, what you were doing, and what your routine communication tasks were as you were gathering these communication inhibitors. So in other words, it sets the context for the table that is to follow. This is nothing more than a, than a, than a paragraph, two short paragraphs, that sets the context for the communication inhibitor. Now comes part two, the list of communication inhibitors. Now, there are several things that, uh, that students sometimes get wrong when doing this list of communication inhibitors. Thing number one is that you don't provide a general definition. In this list of communication inhibitors, I'm looking for a general definition, not a definition that applies to your workplace or the problems you found. I want a textbook, di dictionary type definition. Of course, you can't plagiarize, you have to kind of read all the sources I gave you and come up with your own definition, one that makes sense. Second thing that students often get wrong is parallelism. Here's the deal on parallelism. parallelism. Things that are parallel to each other must have the same grammatical form. You can't say, I love to fish, to ski, and swimming. You can't say that. I said to fish, to ski, to swim. That things that are parallel to each other have to have the same construction. So let's look at Tamara's uh, parallel uh, things here. Notice that she is using kind of the non-sentence. Person, uh, personal inhibitors. Person not tolerating messages sent or received due to personal bias. Perceptual inhibitors. The message misunderstood. Nonverbal inhibitors. Person's body language that suggests. Notice that they're not sentences. That's fine. You can have definitions that are not sentences. Indeed, that's how the dictionary does it. So keep that in mind, that if you start off having non-sentences, you have to have non-sentences in all of them. If you start off having sentences, you've got to have sentences in all of them. If you start off each one with the word to, you got T-O, you have to have the word to, T-O, in all of them. They must be parallel. Let me, uh, let me throw up another communication analysis up there really quickly. Let's look at the one that was done by uh, Barry Hillman. These are fictitious names, by the way. Look at his definitions. Notice that each one begins with a verb, result, occur, are, is, is. So you have to have parallelism among that list. Third thing that students usually get wrong is that they don't style the name of the inhibitor, 
In other words, it looks like the body copy. That's a list there. And the heading for the list, audience expectations, communication barriers, connotative meanings, has to be styled differently. You'll see it as it is in a dictionary. It has to be styled differently than its definition. Uh, Barry here used italics. He used the round bullet. Let's go back to Tamara's. And what did Tamara use? She used the little flower uh, bullet and she bold-faced each of the uh, communication inhibitors. Okay, so that's the deal on the list of and definitions of communication inhibitors, and that's the hardest thing to get right. Now, the next thing after that is part three, the application of inhibitors, divided into three parts, communication sample, communication inhibitor, and application. The communication sample is actually the kind of verbatim, or at least your summary of it, the thing that happened. You simply are reporting what you heard, you're reporting what you read, um, and, and you're doing it without judgment as accurately as you can. Then comes the identification of what inhibitor is represented, you think is represented, in that uh, sample that you just gave me under communication sample. Then the third part, application. In application, you bring the two together. You justify why you think that that sample is that kind of inhibitor. For example, um, Tamara's refraining from answering questions asked by instructors even if I know the correct answer. She identified that as a personal inhibitor and now she's got to justify it. Allowing personal fears of looking foolish to stop students from communicating any messages in class. She's using the non-synthesis. Completely blocks communication when personal inhibitors such as this occur. So she's done a good job. It's personal affairs that block her own personal ability to, uh, to communicate. A personal inhibitor. Afraid of being judged. Afraid of looking foolish, etc. So that's how the three columns work on the table. Then the last part is the uh, assessment of communication effectiveness. Uh, some of the things that are gotten wrong here is that whenever you have a number that is two or more digits, you must write the number, not the word. Uh, numbers one through nine, you can write them O-N-E, T-W-O, T-H-R-E-E. -E. But 10 and up, actually, actually I think it's 11 and up, I'd have to look up what style guide we're using. It differs from style guide to style guide. But um, from 10 or 11 on up, they have to be uh, digits. They have to be numbers. As you can see from these, these are very short papers. Uh, I mean, two and a half, three pages long, and that's with a lot of white space, and I do want you to have a lot of white space. You might want to look at the tables. I want your tables to be designed well. But let's look at, it. Let's look at Tamara's table. Tamara does a good job at, look at Tamara's table, she does a good job at leaving white space at the edge of each cell. And if you don't know how to set white space uh, around a cell, uh, you need to do some work on that, or maybe I'll post a video on it on Microsoft Word. But uh, it's a good look, she's got a good looking table, and she leaves ample white space around the text in each cell. That's something else that I'll be looking for. So, uh, there you go. I know I'm getting this to you a little late. If you need extra time, now that you've kind of heard this and you want to go back and redo things, don't worry about it. Uh, it takes me a long time to grade these things. It takes me about an hour, hour and a half to grade each paper. Okay, so there you go. Again, if you need, more, if you need extra time on this project number one, let me know. It's no problem whatsoever. We're adults. You have full-time lives and you're trying to go to school at the same time. I understand. This is adult education. So let me know if you need extra time and I will respect that. Okay, great talking to all of you and I will look forward to looking at your Project 1 next week. See you later.